ever wondered where all the pebbles that you throw into streams come from and where they end up? As a researcher, I've spent a lot of time looking at rivers all across the world. And something I've noticed is that different rivers have different sizes and types of sediment in them. By sediment, I mean the sand, the gravel and the pebbles which are travelling through the river channels towards the ocean. But where does this sediment originally come from? To find the source of the pebbles, we need to travel to the source of the river high up in the mountains. Mountains eroding are the biggest source of sediment. But where do mountains come from? In order to answer all these questions, I think we need to speak to some detectives. No, no, not that kind of detective. We need to speak to a specific kind of detective who will help us look at the events of the past in order to unravel the journey that this pebble has been on. We need to speak to some geologists. Emily, I found this really interesting looking rock in a river. I know that before it made it to the river, it was high up on a mountain. Can this rock tell me anything about how the mountains it came from formed? Well, Rose, you're actually in luck. So if you look really closely here, you can see red minerals. They're garnets. Now the garnets are really interesting because they can tell us a lot about how the mountain belt will have formed. Once upon a time, this rock here would be much like the sediments that you find in your river. So the sands and the gravels. But millions of years ago, this rock would have been buried deep beneath our feet, maybe tens of kilometers down. Now the reason we can tell this is because of the garnets. So if we were to take this to the lab and look at the chemistry of the garnets, they would tell us that the rock's been at high pressures and high temperatures due to the weight of the overlying rock above it. So these garnets will probably tell you that your rock would have once been about 30 kilometres beneath the surface. Wow, 30 kilometres, that's really deep. How does a rock get buried so deeply? Well, that's actually a really interesting question. So we have to think about how the mountain belts themselves are forming. Mountain ranges are formed when you get the collision of the rocky crust of our planet. So when I'm talking about the crust, the Earth's a bit like an orange. The crust is the outer rocky layer, a bit like the, the rind. It's broken up into plates. These plates can move about the surface. So when you get the collision of two continents, what ends up happening is that the rocks get folded and deformed and we get these huge mountain ranges building up. Now, the mountains themselves are really high, they're 7,000 metres, but actually mountain belts are a little bit like icebergs. So underneath the mountains you have a huge depth of rock, so kilometres and kilometres. So quite easily your rock would have been forced down and buried at 30 kilometres. That's fascinating, thanks for that Eleni. My pleasure. So my rock was once buried really deep beneath the Earth's surface. But to make its way to the river, it had to be eroded from high up on a mountain. So how did my rock get from being 30 kilometres beneath the Earth's surface to 7,000 metres above sea level? I'm wondering if you can tell me how rocks go from being beneath the Earth's surface to at the surface. What are the processes that lead to this happening? So that process is called exhumation and the best way that we can get those deep rocks back up to the surface is by weakening the mountain first. But mountains are made of rocks and rocks are really strong. So how do we weaken a mountain belt? Well, what you've got to think of is in the heart of the mountain, you're squeezing and deforming these rocks and they get to really high temperatures and pressures. And when that happens, the rocks just can't take it anymore and eventually they begin to melt. And it's this molten rock that kind of forms the soft centre of a mountain and it makes the crust able to move and almost flow back up towards the surface, kind of like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube. And how fast does this kind of thing happen? 
Well, we might not see it as very fast, but it's about the rate that your hair grows, around three centimetres a year. Now, over geological time and tens of millions of years, that means that the crust can move hundreds of kilometres. And how do we know that these processes have happened? So we can look at rocks like this granite here, and this is the solidified remains of the molten crust. Now the best way to understand the melting process is to cut them into really narrow slices and make thin sections. And this allows the light to come through the microscope and us to see the individual minerals, which are what you can see on the screen here in different colours. So how thin is a thin section? So there are about 40 microns, which is about the width of a human hair. So from a really thin section of rock, we can find out how mountains were formed and then how rocks made their way to the Earth's surface. Absolutely. Today, we found out all about my pebbles journey from deep beneath the Earth's surface to the top of the mountain and then into a river channel. But now I'm left wondering what happens to my pebble once it reaches the ocean? I'm hoping Chris will help me find out. Chris, can you tell me what happens to sediments when they reach the ocean? That's a brilliant question. So what happens as your river washes your sediment to the sea? A lot of it sinks down to the bottom and forms a new sea floor. If you're really lucky, you'll have an animal that was living in the ocean at the time. When it dies, that'll sink to the floor as well and your sediment will fall on top of it. And then, if you're really lucky, you can get a fossil. So can fossils tell geologists anything? Fossils are incredible. Not only can they tell you what an animal was like when it was alive, but it can also tell you about the environment that it was living in. They're crucial because they can provide a snapshot of time that enables geologists to reconstruct Earth's history. And some fossils, you can even find them on top of mountains, they're that cool. Almost like a cycle. Well, what a journey this pebble's been on. I'm not sure I'll ever look at pebbles the same way again. It started off life deep beneath the Earth's surface, was brought to the top of the mountain, and then ended up in a river. Perhaps one day it will find its way back to the top of the mountain, and the scientists of the future will be able to use it to find out about the world we live in today.